So I wanted to separate skincare in atopic dermatitis for children with that for adults because children are a special population. So we the heading starts with what we call wrap it up skin strategies for little kids. Wrap it up meaning kids will work well with occlusion where you apply your emollient, you apply your steroid, then you put on the baby romper and you apply all this immediately after you shower them and allow them to soak in some nice warm water, you will see a remarkable improvement in their skin. Parents have seen that when it comes to baby skin, the diaper area tends to be the smoothest and most hydrated because it's occluded. When it comes to babies with atopic dermatitis, more often than not, we often see that their skin can be the best in the diaper area. If we could diaper the whole body, then kids suffering with atopic dermatitis, stroke eczema, will do really well. But since we can't diaper the whole body, what we need to do is come up with other ways to compensate by providing a physical barrier for that inherently impaired atopic dermatitis skin. Everybody has to try different things and decide what works for them. But I like plastic wrap for focal rashes. Plastic wrap is basically the clean foil we use in the kitchen. Let me get it really fast. Akina? Yeah, that's clean foil with water. Nasa flower oil. So let's do this practically. I've already told you that the best oil to use for babies is sunflower oil. Jane, thanks for the singing. <laughs> My aunt loves to sing. <laughs> so you see, this is Rin Sun Sunflower Oil. You just use this on your babies as your emollient. This is emollient cream. I'm just showing you it says emollient cream. When you're buying barrier creams, they will either say emollient cream or emulsifying ointment. Emulsifying ointment in the pharmacy is a big jar for 300 shillings. So this is what the dermatologist is telling you to use. Where you have focal rashes and you want occlusion, you want them to heal faster, you apply your emollient, you apply the steroid as per instructed by the doctor, and then you wrap with a foil, with a cling film, sorry. So, I don't suggest securing the wrap onto the skin with tape because a lot of kids can develop allergies to the adhesive in tape itself. In order to conceal the plastic wrap and make the look more fun for kids, covering the wrap with colorful duct tape. Duct tape is just this. Duct tape is cello tape. Colorful duct tape sold at hardware stores, though not in a way that the tape could stick onto the skin, helps disguise the weird looking wrap possibly creating something kids might be willing to wear to school. Wet wraps and gloves. When we prescribe wet wrap therapy, that doesn't necessarily mean using gauze wraps on the skin. You can use clothing to help seal in moisture. For example, the way I said, you bath the baby, you don't need to soak the romper in water. But immediately you finish bathing the baby, instead of drying them, you apply your emollient and your steroid and then you dress them with the romper when they are still a bit wet. That helps to occlude the moisture. Soft, smooth cotton clothing with reduced seams, like the romper, can be great to cover the child for bedtime. For another alternative, long sleeve, oh, for another alternative, long sleeve cotton thermal underwear can be flipped inside out so the seams don't touch the skin. Seams is this area of the cloth this one you know rompers don't have that that's why they're calling it seamless clothing 
Sometimes you perform the whole wet wrap or wet pajama routine and you're okay for a while. If you wake up itchy in the middle of the night because the wet wrap cloth has dried out, you may need to start over wetting the skin again and applying more barrier cream or ointment. Actually, in kids who have severe eczema or in adults, we usually recommend that you apply your emollient about four to six hourly. So if you're feeling really itchy, if the baby's feeling itchy, you wet their skin, you apply the emollient, then you dress them with the pajamas. So reassess what you are covering the wet wrap or clothes with. It can be challenging if sweating occurs, so trial and error is needed to find what works for you during different seasons. They mean, you see, if there are some parents who actually wet the baby's romper. Like if the eczema is severe, they are actually recommended to wet the baby's romper. Thing is, you can't dress that baby in the wet romper and then you just leave them alone. You dress them in the wet romper and then you wrap them up a bit for warmth. So they're saying sometimes you can make the kids sweat. So you have to know how to judge and do what's necessary. If you have hand or wrist dermatitis, wearing fingerless gloves can help protect the skin while still allowing for finger dexterity, e.g. for holding pens and pencils. For example, you can get gloves that are finger fingerless or cut, get gloves and then cut off the fingers and then wear them as occlusion where you actually apply emollient on your hands for to six hourly to allow the hands to heal and then you go on continuing to do your work in the house or whatever and you just leave the fingers open for dexterity if you're using pens and such so even just ordinary gloves like from the pharmacy if you wear them you help protect your hands from dryness kinder gentler bleach baths we love to recommend bleach baths but know these don't work for everyone Bleach baths can be painful because they are often called for at the time when the skin is flaring and has a lot of open wounds. That's why they are not usually recommended by dermatologists because they only add discomfort to the child. But sometimes when the dermatologist thinks that you're probably headed to getting an infection and they want to preempt, they want to be precautionary, then they can ask you to put some jig in the baby's bath. One tip I like to suggest is to get into the bath with the dressings still on. That is, you get into you get the baby into the bath or the child into the bath when they're still wearing a romper. This will allow the skin to re-equilibrate and help alleviate some of the initial discomfort of getting into the bath before you start pulling the wraps off. So with the bleach bath, you can actually tell the child to get into it with some clothes so that they don't get uncomfortable, so that they just soak in some moisture and then you remove the cloth. That is if you've been told to use a bleach bath by your clinical dermatologist, which is rare. Another way to help tolerate getting into bleach baths is to put a little antibacterial ointment or petroleum jelly in the cracks of the skin. For children, you can distract the child with toys or an activity during the first couple of minutes of a bleach bath. So they are focused on something other than the changing skin sensation that takes place in the first few minutes after getting in the tub. So you'll find that eczema is common, more common in blacks, but then it's more severe in Caucasians and Asians, even though it's even though it's not as common in them. And that's why for them, these bleach baths actually have a place. So schedule spa time. I encourage older kids and adults to use the evening bath time as their spa treatment. It's a time to say, this is how I'm taking care of myself. I'm really going to relax, decompress, and get ready for bed. Bedtime is usually the most itchy time for people. Yes, people with eczema are actually advised to shower before bedtime to hydrate the skin, even for children. Instill each intervention. Just as you all should have a plan for when you see a fire starting in your home, you and your whole family should have a plan for when you see that you are having a more significant degree of itching or repeated itching in a particular place. Because most times, atopic dermatitis is in the family. So more than one person, including the child, will have it. You want to stop the sparks before the fire starts. And we all know that the command stop scratching doesn't work, right? If anything, it might actually make your child more anxious, which can lead to anxiety and more scratching. So you know children go to school, unfortunately. So you have to make sure that you use emollient very well on them at night and in the morning so that they don't scratch during the day. I came up with something called the Instant Each Intervention Plan to help find an active behavioral replacement for scratching constantly itchy skin. So the plan is step one, skin action. 
like for me what i used to do whenever my uh, topic dermatitis was flaring up is that i'd immediately get petroleum jelly and rub it and i always had a steroid in my bag till now i always carry a steroid in my bag actually right now i don't have a steroid which is wrong i usually would have one which shows that my atopic dermatitis has actually reduced because i never used to walk without a hydrocortisone cream in my bag the one thing that i have right now is antibiotic ointments for certain things which i will talk about soon so this can vary per person but your skin action might mean applying a moisturizer and paying attention to how that helps like i'd apply emollient or apply petroleum jelly or try wetting your skin before applying a moisturizer some may want to use a cold compress or take a shower in order to rinse off sweat irritants and allergens and to rehydrate dry skin others might want to adjust the bath routine so as to take a couple of really short baths or showers on that day if needed so sometimes when the child is really itchy you can actually just put them in a warm bath and then apply emollient on them we know from studies that applying a moisturizer or wrap is not as effective in long-term control of each as using a corticosteroid that's why they say that approaching atopic dermatitis needs a three-legged approach where you do a skincare trigger uh identification and control and three medication so you have to use a corticosteroid to apply you can still get a lot of comfort from moisturizing and wrapping the skin because you're doing barrier compensation even if it's just for 30 minutes just to get over the each episode so you're just constantly applying the emollient or moisturizer on that place so that you get reduced each if putting on moisturizer or adding a wrap isn't quite enough then you might want to use a steroid before you see the rash like i used to use steroids as a precaution like sometimes i get erythematous or red patches on my skin then i usually know that i'm about to get a flare and i apply the steroid there and you know that if you keep scratching that rash is bound to appear or even if i like i was so precautionary even if i feel a small scratch on my skin i will usually buy a steroid immediately usually hydrocortisone to apply so that it does not develop I like to use the steroid in a hot spot just before it really flares up. You and your health provider can talk about where or when you can also use a corticosteroid for maintenance control. That's why most of you actually fail with acne, acne and eczema care. Both for your children and for yourself, you should never be discharged without a maintenance regimen. So that, uh, um, that regimen that I keep on calling after acne care regimen, it's actually called a maintenance regimen for acne so let me just see if i can get something on that because i kind of need to do that but i'll do that later for you guys i need to be content for that because most of you even for eczema you don't know that your first appointment is not your last appointment you actually need follow-up so step two distraction action or focus on something else as soon as you've treated the skin the way that is right for you, know that the itch isn't going to settle down instantaneously. Treatment needs a few minutes to work while your skin action takes effect. Do something fun to distract the man from the itch. This is one of the few times I would advocate playing video games. This is advice for children. Try a relaxing activity before bed like reading a book or telling a story, doing meditation or listening to music, even for kids. The idea is to find as many healthy ways as possible to forget about scratching. Laughing and doing fun or relaxing things increases dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins. All these brain chemicals can make you feel better and reduce itch. Even for your children, read them a story before bedtime so that they don't itch. Sometimes you might be able to notice that you're itchy, accept that you're an itchy person, and just let it be. If you've taken action to help provide relief, believing in it and giving it time to work can sometimes quell the compulsion to scratch. So basically, the message here is this. If you are eczema prone and you're itching, you're not controlled. So you need to seek specialist care. That running to the pharmacy and using emollient and steroid that is not the right potency is actually hurting your skin. Because itching the skin is hurting it. There is no one answer. You've got to find what works for you. So we finished that.